இது போட்டு ஆன் வைக்கணுமா Which color do you want? Any color? Black. Black? Black. Your car. Okay. Did you start? Okay. What is your expectation today? What is your expectation today? Okay. You? Okay. Current affairs. Current affairs, eh? Current affairs topics. Okay. Can you erase one program? Okay. Hmm? Okay. But what we'll do? <coughs> See, as far as like history is concerned, questions have very few references to current affairs actually. Your relevance of current affairs is like less when compared to your other subjects. So your relevance of current affairs is less. Actually, only UPSC knows why they are asking certain questions. Every year, at least like other papers like polity, economy, somehow will be able to bring some current affairs connect. But history, it's like slightly difficult to bring such a connect. But but current affairs has yes, it has some relevance. Okay, fine. Overall. History as a whole, what are the areas do you think they ask questions from? Like how, how are history questions asked? Predominantly, like both your art and culture, ancient, medieval, modern India, everything put together, how are questions asked? 
see again first they ask from terminologies you see every year at least two to three questions will come from terminologies places locations on maps especially this is very popular in maths of following the places locations maps this they ask in maths the following then they ask about kingdoms rulers and any significant policies then literatures literatures and philosophies i think last year they had asked a question on sangam literature see all these stock points it's up unanimously applicable in all four areas art and culture ancient history medieval history and modern india all these are applicable for all areas and when we discuss specific topics we'll discuss how they differ okay literature philosophies religion religion and bhakti movement bhakti movement sufi movement and religion again you have in ancient history what religion you have early early ancient history what is the religion you have early medieval early ancient there is no religion at all only after rigvedic period your religion actually comes up okay so and then you have you will have hinduism then you will have buddhism and jainism then you will have hmm? okay but prominently you will have what christianity islam and then jains to a certain extent zoroastrianism okay can i like raise this next is architectures all the different types of architectures since ancient india we we'll have cave architecture stupas temples then okay all those comes under temples memorials so this is the area where current affairs comes in so if any memorial or temple or stupa or a cave whether like your uh, whether our president or prime minister has visited or they have inaugurated so questions are asked from architecture here okay and then culture as a whole see culture in the sense like society how mauryan society look like or how the rigvedic society look like or how the rigvedic society differ differed from the later vedic society so all those comes into picture within society more emphasis on women slaves children I think last year there was a question on slaves 2022 there was a question on slaves okay and then you talk about administration 
administration or polity of different kingdoms okay fine and then organizations organizations and press this has like more relevance in modern india you know you if you the spectrum whatever book you are following there will be so many organizations which are discussed in many press as well so all those you should have some fair idea you need not know in detail but you should know who started that who ran that what is the objective of that and then does it have any significance now so you should know that the same goes with press also okay and here you cannot miss out your indian national congress because the indian national congress was started as a small organization but it spearheaded the indian freedom movement okay so this is the broad understanding okay so this question comes under which part this comes under locations and maps whatever locations you come across in ancient medieval modern you just have your map beside you i think your atlas i think your atlas it has different maps for ancient as well as medieval india so you just what whenever you come across any place just try to locate them on maps okay i think uh, one year there was a question on uh, ports ports are shipping somewhat ports dockyard something and they had given four indus valley sites a b c d and they gave four indus valley sites and of the four only one was a coastal city rest all were landlocked cities so if you know which is a port city which is a landlocked city definitely you'll be able to answer this whether whether you know whether the port existed or not if you know which is a coastal city and which are landlocked cities you'll be able to answer this question okay so it is better that you get to know about the locations and what is this every year directly or indirectly questions on ashoka's rock edits will come for sure so you just know what in which language they are written region specific for instance like your north western india the your current afghanistan your script will be different from what is there in your central india central part of india so you should know region wise what in what language and what script it is written okay and you should be clear about what is the message it message it carries you know so rock edicts of ashoka it describes about the territorial extent of mauryan empire and in that there is a mention of cheras cholas and pandyas as well in this territorial extent of mauryan empire reference of cheras cholas and pandyas are also there okay so these are significant aspects of ashoka's rock edicts and somehow directly or indirectly it's asked okay fine assume 
you are not knowing see this is a new trend that upsc introduced last year see previously at least one one place you will know whether it's right or wrong with that you will be able to eliminate the options and then arrive at the answer but here you should know precisely all the four options okay now what you will do here i think i attempted this question but yeah i attempted this question i, I think i got it right i think so i am not very sure but i think i got it right but how what do you do here karnataka hmm why no 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 see i told you no in mauryan empire this reference of cheras solas pandyas means what assume this is south india chera solas pandyas they occupied almost this much i think to south of krishna you had chera solas and pandyas so top of krishna what you have both karnataka and andhra right see i am not asking see when i saw this question actually i knew nothing i think except i think dauli i was like hardly i was sure i was that also i was not sure but somehow i told you know already you should attempt 92 95 questions and i was well short of 92 95 so i thought somehow i should answer this so what what i did it could be right because that is a mediocre answer see this is a see this guess is a last resort guess if you have exit if you have like exhausted all your mind and if you are not knowing anything see because i think there were like five to six questions like this only only one is correct two are correct three are correct all are correct out of this five to six if you mark everything as b at least there is a chance that at least one third will get it right see this you should use it only as a last resort not in the first place okay okay see this is about literature okay in literature what you will read see you need not know the entire details or what every each and every literature talks about but just split your literatures region wise your ancient literature your sangam literature your medieval in medieval you had hindi islamic urdu malayalam telugu kannada and in your sangam you will have jain literatures tamil literatures in ancient you will have buddhist literatures so you just need to know what are the major prominent literatures of those times and then what general characteristic every literature exhibits okay for instance your sangam literature your core theme of all sangam literature is what aham and puram what is aham and puram aham means what's inside puram means what's outside so it essentially talks about love and war because love is inside war is outside so your entire sangam literature it talked about love and war okay so in this question what all options you can eliminate a you can eliminate okay see this is an extreme statement okay second one the social classification of varna was known to sangam poets may or may not okay what is this sangam poems have no reference to warrior ethics is it true why 
Why it is false? It is false, but why it is false? Because it is talking about war means it will definitely talk about war ethics as well. So your T is also wrong. Then your Sangam literature refers to magical forces as irrational. So what about that? Okay. Now between B and D, which is more likely to be right? See, these A and C are definitely wrong. Between B and C, which is more likely to be right? Why? Okay, fine. It's a good guess. Then? What do you know about... Uh, I think there were four fold classification right of people in Sangam period. What was that? What are those four? Kurinji, Mullai, Marudam, Palai, then Naidu. See this depicts different landscapes and as well as the social classification that arises out of the landscapes depending on the people they, the god they worship. So, this is more likely to be right. Okay, fine. Okay. See, again this is a literature question. Yoga Vasistha was translated into Persian during the Regna. See, this question you cannot answer unless and until you know Unless and until you know who, who has actually done it. Okay. But still, what logic do you you will apply? <laughs> okay, can element over on the zip by okay, he's more of warrior type. He had very little interest in developing art and culture. Okay, so you can remove D. Then Humayun also. Why Humayun? In the period of history in Mandri. Okay, that is there, but even the little time what he had, he was focused more on building his empire. So, see one of the major uh, like mandate that is required for art and culture is, for flourishment of art and culture, you should have a stable regime. Your Babar and Humayun, they were focused more on building their empire. So, they did not have much time on literatures. Okay, now Akbar and Shah Jahan, who is more likely to be right? Shah Jahan, why? Why Shah Jahan is more likely to be right? Okay. Okay. You? Akbar. Why Akbar? See, Akbar <coughs> he is the most liberal ruler of the entire Mughal kingdom. Okay. So it is more likely that he must have done this. See, Shah Jahan, yes. He was more focused on architectures, architectures and paintings. Akbar gave equal importance to everything. Every art and culture was given due focus by Akbar. So it is more likely that your Akbar is the right answer. Okay, fine. Okay, now here comes your. See, this was asked last year new circuit near Somnath temple. So, this is basically a question about Somnath temple. Okay, why was this asked is, see the reference is given by UPSC itself. Because Prime Minister has recently inaugurated a new circuit near Somnath temple of Peraval. So, this year what, what are Prime Minister and President? So, naturally where will be looking for? You have to look for any special cultural site or a temple which was inaugurated or visited by our Prime Minister and President this year. So, recently our President laid foundation for Prasad Screen project in Badra Chalam and Rudreshwar temple in Telangana. So, you just know who built this. This Badra Chalam temple was built under whom? Which kingdom was it built? Who was the main contributor? What religion does it uh, 
like propagate whether it propagates only hinduism or it's a mix of everything and what kind of architecture does it uh, does it signify so you just go through all those and similarly what there is sri salem temple that is developed in andhra pradesh as well and then this read about this also ujjain's mahakal corridor there are something else, some other news as well which like our prime minister or president has visited we'll see that in subsequent slides okay we'll move okay what is this okay first how do you chronologically arrange your ancient india the first comes your paleolithic mesolithic and your neolithic your indus valley comes under mesolithic period okay so so first in chronology comes your indus valley civilization after indus valley civilization comes your rigvedic period then comes your later vedic then mahajanapadas then mauryas then comes your post mauryas then guptas post guptas so in between your uh, like mauryas post mauryas or mahajanapadas here will come your sangam literature i mean your sangam sangam age okay so this is the chronological arrangement so in all these areas you have to fit in the first set of seven points that i told you you have to fit in literatures art culture places rulers kingdoms policies so you, society administration everything you have to read specifically according for all these kingdoms okay fine so shall i okay artha artha shastra comes under which whose period maurya during maurya's period see this was a slave question that i talked about okay so you just should know what artha shastra talked about slaves what artha shastra has told about politics what should like know artha shastra's focus on politics administration economy external affairs intelligence spy and slips okay so you should know i mean atha has talking about all this just know some two to three points for all these aspects because it is like Im- impossible for us to memorize everything you just have an exposure so that it will help you in eliminating the options and here is this okay here comes a proper <coughs> art and culture question okay okay in art and culture what all you should follow is should talk about architecture so architecture has a lot of types to talk about cave architecture temple architecture then some specific structures stupas 
viharas, chaityas, and then paintings. Paintings, types of paintings. You'll have folk and regional paintings as well. Give more focus on this. Regional paintings are those Kalamkari painting, Pattachitra painting, Kaligat painting, so all those. Whatever is there in Nathan Singhania, you just try to like, read through. Then you have music and dance. For this, again, there is a whole lot of variety of music and dance which is there, but what you can focus is here you can focus on current affairs. It suppose any state government or union government has promoted any dance or whether any dance or music has been recognized by UNESCO or was was recommended for uh, like a UNESCO's intangible like heritage. So from those news you can pick music and dance. Okay. Next is your handicrafts. Handicrafts I think you can give very little focus. Okay, and then language and religion. What are the types of languages that are available in India? At least for the major prominent ones, you should know what was the origin, <coughs> what are the scripts, and which script is recognized by government of India. So, all those you should know. And then religion, that I think again you should know about Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Jain, Christianity, everything. So, you should and along with literatures, religious literatures, literatures and philosophies. Okay, fine. So, this is a question which talks about festivals. Okay. And then martial arts should have some idea about martial arts and then numismatics. What is numismatics? Hmm. Hmm. P. What is numismatics? It was 2016 or 17, I don't remember. Mains question. Was asked for 10 marks. Numismatics is study of coins, coins and currencies. Okay. So, see, as of now, I have given you three different structures, right? You should fit all the structures together. You should fix chronology. You should fix what UPSC is asking. You should fix all these aspects into one common area and then you should study. Okay? Fine. So, this year, your Prime Minister, our Prime Minister has talked about this Matua Mela festival. Okay? Actually, this festival, it is celebrated. I think this has something to do with scheduled castes of West Bengal. So, there is a high chance that it can be asked this year. Okay, And they, you just have some idea about who started this. This was not started by a Dalit. It was started by someone else. Okay, But it is paying homage to, it is paying some respect to your Dalit population. Okay, So, just since it is like directly referred by our Prime Minister, the chances that can be asked. Let us move to the next one. See, again, this has to do with what? Religion. Okay, in religion, what all you look for? I think all those what I told you, right? Terms, literature, places, any places that is referred, depiction of society and admin. So, like whatever structures that I have given you, you should just fit in. So, you should cover religion in all those aspects. Okay. So, who is a future Buddha? I think it is Maitreya. See again, this is again some terms that is a religious practices, Tanakwasi. 
Sthanakvasi, I think it is related to Jainism or Buddhism. Jainism, right? See, this term is directly there in your Nitin Zingania. This term was directly picked up from Nitin Zingania. I do not know whether they have picked it up from there, but this term is there in Nitin Zingania. Okay. Even if you do not know, you can eliminate two options here. How? See, hmm. any guess? See, I cannot tell you can arrive at the answer or not, but definitely you can eliminate two options. So, what will be the guess? See, from seeing the term, this depicts something that is selfless or something, selfless. See, Vasi means what? Being, living. Your Shaivism and Vaishnavism, it does not talk more about this living aspect of life. It will talk, it will have emphasis, but this will have more emphasis on methods of worship. Methods of worship, gods, so, Shaivism and Vaishnavism will have more focus on it, but your Buddhism and Jainism, they have more focus on how to conduct your life, how to lead a principled life. So, you can eliminate these two and more likely it is something to do with your Buddhism or Jainism. Okay. See, again this is a painting, this is a folk painting, Banitani painting. So, you just need to have some rough idea about the paintings that are there in India. Okay. Hmm. What is this Rigvedic Aryans and Indus Valley people? Which are the following statement is our right? Okay. Hmm. So, this comes under what? Society, right? This is something to do with the peep comparing the people of Rigvedic Aryans and Indus Valley Aryans. Okay. So, by reading this statement, what do you think is the answer? What? Eliminate two. Why? That does not know about. In this way, people they do not know about iron. Okay, fine. Then. B and D. Okay. Then. C is correct. Okay. These are what extreme statements. See. <clears throat> In evolution, I mean, this time just drifting away from the question, how long do you think your horse might have taken to, to be in the state what it is now? Like how many years do you think your horse must have taken to be in the current state? 
maybe even like some lakhs of years your horse has evolved over a lakhs of years so your presence of horse is not something 4000 or 5000 years before it is something that is very old so your indus valley people not being uh, not at all being aware of this animal is very rare okay so your this statement is wrong even if you do not know whether the statement is right or wrong if you eliminate 3 your b c d goes okay see generally you should start a question you should read till the option if you have a question like this where one option keeps on repeating it is enough if you identify whether that statement is right or not see if you see that is right you can eliminate only one option see so assume your third statement is right you will be able to eliminate only one option but if you prove that wrong you directly will arrive at the answer so reading a question is not only about reading till all the three answers but it is also reading about all the options as well so okay. fine see this is again dance i think dance again you have two types right you have classical and folk so you should like have some idea about both types of i think in classical there are like some eight types right bharatanatyam mohini atam so like that you have, you have some eight dances so you just have some idea about all those eight dances who was the proponent in which region it was like practiced what is the purpose whether it is shiva worship or like uh, vishnu worship who is performing where it is performed only by women or only by men or it is performed by any everybody else and how it has evolved now okay so this is again a dance or a martial art color is what martial art okay what is this panchayat panchayat it is a style of temple construction why it is called panchayat see that is why what they have given this assembly of village elders and as some administrative function that's why they have given those options to confuse you but panchayat is an style of temple construction why it is called panchayat any idea panchayat you will have a central shrine here followed by some four around that is why it is called as panchayat so it is likely that this can be repeated as well because your prime minister and president they have opened up a lot of temples so instead of picking any one temple they can generally ask about terms associated with temple architectures okay and in goa there was a 350 year old temple which was inaugurated just read what is that temple and then your home minister has inaugurated a temple in kashmir okay and your prime minister has declared this town modira as a first 24 cross 7 solar power village and then president offered prayer at tripura sundari temple so for all these temples whatever is mentioned here you just get to know about their location who is the main deity who constructed it who which ruler or under which whose kingdom they were constructed and whether it has any cultural significance or not okay okay see this is a direct if you know what is a chaitra and vihara you will be able to answer this question 
this comes from what architecture architecture especially buddhist architecture and terms associated with buddhist architecture say so told you know whatever three structures i have given you you have to collaborate okay next is your medieval india see your ancient is done and one thing about your art and culture is you cannot see it as a separate subject you have to do your ancient you have to do your medieval india you have to do your modern india and in that art and culture will travel across okay there is no rigid separation between your history and art and culture okay so you see again this is what something to do with your king and the dynasty so this you should have some idea at least see whatever dynasty whatever prominent dynasties that have ruled india try to know at least two to three names you need not memorize but you just be exposed if you are exposed repeatedly at least you will be able to one eliminate one or two see again what is this this is this is 2022 question see again what is the answer here two pairs see again suppose in those in that question and this question if you had mark two pairs means your both answers are right see this need not repeat this year again see again this year they might shift to three pairs also you can see they might skip this question or even if they ask this question they might have a standard thing of like two or three pairs okay. but i'm just giving you some rough idea okay what is this in medieval india the term for so this is again what a terminology okay so what is this talk about phanam hmm why coins you know is it see sometimes you have to apply some crude logic what is phanam phanam is money in tamil first of all we do not know whether phanam is the actual tamil word for currency or not that we do not know because you have what mixing of languages but there is more chance that the influence of one language and another language is can be definitely there okay if you tell paisa anybody will understand what is paisa tamil or kannadiga or telugu or hindi hindi speaking will whom for to whom ever if you tell paisa they will understand so similarly what this panam this is something similar to your panam in tamil so it's your coins see this is again a crude logic which you should apply only when you have no idea about that question and you are in you are put in a situation to answer that question okay okay what is this khulla dara again this is what a terminology so now what you do is whatever new terminologies or uh, terminologies that describe people or society just try to make a note of it okay anything might come see because this is a very random question you like whatever logic you apply you will not know why upsc has picked such questions there is a issue with history okay and your history is actually the it can make or break your problems why because i think easily you will have 20 questions and all 20 questions will be is, is going to be equally tough for everybody except for the history option it's like tough for everybody so how you handle these 20 questions matters okay no okay, what is this seaport of kakatiya kingdom no i am not sure i think it's merchants i think so. i think it's merchants Hmm? Kulla Daran. 
I think I left this question. No, no, I am not sure. No, no, no. I am not aware. I am not aware. I am not aware. Okay. Fine, fine. Okay. 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 So, the Dharan is Tamil. So, what? Dharan now, what does it mean? Okay. Yeah, actually, see, I think I answered this with Kulla only. Kulla means what? The thing that Muslims wear. But the thing is, all are Muslims here. See, your Saeeds are Muslims, your Persians are Muslims. I don't know who Kalandas are at all, but your Arabs, everybody is a Muslim. See, again, some crude guess. See, you should mark the you should mark. See, but what I will, I will suggest is, it's better you don't answer this question. See, if suppose, if all these three terms are something to do with other religion, say something here, Mauryas was there. And say here, Guptas was there. And here, Harshas was there. Now, assume all these are not there. See, this is what Kulla Dharan. Your Kulla is something what your Muslim people wear. So, it is more likely to be what? Arab merchants. But now, here, all are Muslims. So, it is better not to take risk here. Okay, what is this? Kankatya Kingdom. Important seaport. I think if you have any people from Andhra Pradesh, I think they will be able to answer this question. See, most of the questions that ask about seaports, at least two options will be a landlocked city. So, with that you will be able to eliminate. I think here, your Masali Pattam is definitely a seaport. And I am not sure about your Nelluru is, I think, Nellur. I think your Nellur is a landlocked city, I think. So, Nellur is not there, you are not the answer. For Kakinada, I am not very sure. So, it has to be something between Motupali or Masali Patnam. Okay, but when is, when is Kakatiya's period? Any idea? Eight nine eighty or something, eight nine eighty or something. But your Masli Patnam was a seaport only during your British periods. Only after the arrival of uh, Europeans, the Masli Patnam became a prominent seaport. So it has to be either Motupali. I think it is Motupali. Motupali answer. Okay. okay. So I think it should be Motupali. So if you know. The location of this and this, you will be able to eliminate these two answers. And among these two, should have some logic. Because your Masli Patnam was a famous seaport only during after the arrival of Europeans. Then to next. Okay, regarding the taxation system. See, taxation system comes under what? Economy. And it talks about Vijayanagar kingdom. Your Vijayanagar, I think they will come somewhere around 12 to 15 AD. 15 or 16 AD. I think until Battle of Talikota. Battle of Talikota is in 1565, I think. So, until 1565, your Vijayanagar kingdom will be prominent. So, this is also an important kingdom. Because I think they have ruled almost the entire South India at some point of time. Okay, so you should uh, like 
know about Vijayanagar kingdom, their policy of taxation, what coins they had issued, what uh, kind of architecture. I think this Mandavam, right? Your this Mandavam architecture was it became prominent under your Vijayanagar rulers only. I think there is this Ayamkal Mandavam. I think have you heard that? I think hmm, that became prominent during Vijayanagar's period. Okay. Okay, what is this? Banjaras. Again, this is a term. Okay. Banjaras, any guess? Traders. Traders. So every year. Hmm? Hmm. See, generally they ask merchants, traders, ports, definitely they'll ask. Somehow, if there is some term and if there is option for port means you can like blindly put ports. Okay. Fine. Okay, what is this? Arrival of Babar. When did Babar arrive? I think it's 15, 15, 13. I think he first he arrived, he was defeated, he went back again, he came in 1526, I think. So I'm not very sure, but it is somewhere between 1510 to 1530. That is when Babar arrived. Okay, so now you should know about the society. Society, who are the rulers? If you know that, you will be able to answer this question. Hmm. What is this? Abhitat Kana. This comes under Akbar's period. Akbar and his religious policies. So what? This is wrong. This is also wrong. So, between C and D, one should be the right answer. Yes. Okay, what is what is this? Discussion, scholars of various religion, option C. Even novels, is, novels are also different creamy layer only. See, this you can answer only if you know what. For what is the purpose why Ibadat Kana was formed? See, this is a very prominent one. See, because this is one of the significant architecture or structure that will depict how Akbar was a secular person. So, you should know the purpose of Ibadat Kana. No. See, again, this is a term Mahatara and Patakila. See, again, this you cannot answer without knowing what they are. Can you go to next? Okay, we'll just take five minutes break and we will continue. Because I think there is little detailed for modern India.
Okay, <clears throat> before we get into the questions, as far as modern India is concerned, again you should develop some chronology here. Who were the first Europeans to come to India? Who were the first Europeans to come to India? Portuguese. 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 First Portugal came, then Portuguese, Dutch. Dutch, Dutch, then English, English. English. French. Danish. What is the speciality of Portuguese? They were the first to come and the last to leave. They left in 1962. 62 or 61. Okay, they left. They came in 14. 98. Your English, they came somewhere in 16, 10 to 16, 20. Okay. So this chronology you should know and you should know about where the Portuguese first established their factories, where which all places they fortified. So this you should know for all the kingdoms because generally the place of settlement or the port that was prominent under these rulers that is like repeatedly asked. Okay. So this you should focus kingdoms and their timelines. Next is your battles. Your Carnatic Wars. Your Anglo French Wars. Anglo Maratha Wars. Anglo Mysore Wars, so in all these wars you should know what is the reason for the conflict, who versus who, who were the prominent rulers during that time, who were the governed generals of India during those times, because that is more important with respect to your Anglo Maratha and Anglo Mysore Wars. Mm -hmm. Who was the Governor General of India during Anglo? I think uh, your Anglo, there are three Anglo Maratha Wars and four Anglo Mysore Wars. So each war had different, different Governor Generals and you should know their names. Okay. And then treaties. What were the treaties that were signed? What are the treaties that were signed to either end the war or to arrive at a truce or <clears throat> to arrive at a conclusion. So, all those treaties you should know. Next is your policies. Policy on education. What is the first holistic policy on education for from, by the, from the British Woods Dispatch? It came in 1850. Four Woods Dispatch, but even in 1833, there was some reference to education in India. And then you will have the Hunter Commission report. Hunter Commission, then Raleigh Commission, then the Varda scheme of education, So, all this you should know. First is your education is done right, then focus on civil services. For your civil services, you should know who coined 
who coined the term or who conceptualized it who was called like father of civil services during that time lord cornwallis and who's father of civil services no i mean i mean after independence so you should know that and then you should know how recruitment to civil services transformed okay i think different different governor generals they had different they had proposed different different policies and you should know the pros and cons of every i think here the most is your lord lytton lord lytton in 1878 you would have given a policy that will differentiate between your english your english civil servants and your indian civil servants so you should know how civil services was established how it transformed what were their roles then judiciary again how judiciary was established how codification of laws happened give more emphasis on this 1833 no not 1833 1861 uh, 1833 there was this law member was added right in 1833 your law member will be added that is prominent and then in 1860s you will have this indian police code and i mean indian penal code and your indian police act ipc so you give focus on that next is your laws okay what was the first law that britishers passed very first constitutional scheme or law regulating act of 1773 should know regulating act of 1773 then 1784 pits india act then 1793 charter act 1813 charter act 1833 charter act and 1853 act see all these four are very very important and you will see how the role of east india company as a both it will be both political as well as commercial body here but as in when 2020 years passes they will become purely a commercial body and their influence over the political affairs will reduce so for that you should understand you should keep track of how the different charter acts have reduced the political affiliations of the east india company so that you should know and these two are like very very important because it's your 1853 charter act that gave the origin of your parliamentary form of government because it is at that time when the executive council will be split for exclusively for law makers and exclusively for law executors so that you should know okay after 1853 in 1858 you will have the queens proclamation so you should know the details about that then 1861 act 1861 councils act and then 1891 92 1892 councils act so it is 1892 act where your uh, question of um question our discussion on budgets all those would have emerged in 1892 councils act okay mm -hmm. already the seats will be shown here see but the thing is they cannot vote upon the budget but discussions were allowed in 1909 some part of the budget was capable capable of being voted upon okay. can i raise this next is your 19 not 9 morley as a part of morley mento reforms then your 1919 montek kelnsford reforms so here you had this question of separate electorate
In 1999, you had the question of diarchy in provinces. And in 1935 act, you had bicameralism plus federalism. And then 1947 act. See, it's important we know 1947 act also. Why? Because 2022 mark 75 years of independence. So, there is a chance that 1947 act can be asked. Okay, fine. Can I move to next? After laws, to talk about land policies. What were the land land taxation? What are the three types of land settlements? Zamindari. Rayatwari. Mahalwari. So, you should know which governor generals were responsible for formulation of these three land settlements and then in which regions were all these three enforced. That you should know and how each differs from each other. So, all that you should know. Okay. And then peasant movements. Starting with your indigo revolt, Pabna revolt, Deccan riots, and after the arrival of Gandhi, there will be some five or six prominent peasant movements. So, all that you should know, you should know prominent leaders who are the ideologies, whether any uh, like. Uh, any press, any press people like supported that or any prominent press had become popular during that time. So, all that you should know. Okay. Next is tribal revolts. Tribal revolts, every year a question is asked on tribal revolts or something to do with affairs of tribes and this year it is more likely to be asked because your president itself is a someone who belongs to tribal community. Santal of Jharkhand. So, it is important we know about their history as well. Okay. So, tribal revolts. Can you move to the next? Next is your organizations. Your pre Congress organizations. Your landlord association, your uh, Hindu Maga, uh, not Hindu Maga Sabha. Mm. Indian Association. Before uh, your Congress was formed in 1885, there will be some other prominent organizations which were formed. So, you should know about that. Then you should know about Congress organizations and associates of Congress organizations. For instance, your All India Kisan Congress, All India Kisan Sabha, the Congress Socialist Party, all are like what? Fallouts of Indian National Congress. And then you should have idea about the other organizations as well, Hindu Maga Sabha, your RSS, your communists. So, all those you should be aware of. Okay. And then press. Press and laws related to press. So, this should be very clear.
and then revolutionaries. Your revolutionaries again, your revolutionaries again, they have their own history. So, prominent revolutionaries, revolutionary organizations, organizations, revolutionary organizations that worked abroad, say in like Canada, Seattle, Berlin, in Germany. So, all those organizations you know, and prominent people who were associated with starting those organizations. So, all those you should know. And then and then focus more on your Gandhian, Gandhian phase. Your Gandhian phase of uh, freedom struggle is only most of the question comes from 1916, 15, 16 till 1947. So this, it is this timeline that UPSC mostly targets. So, here you just develop a chronology of events for this Gandhian phase, you just develop chronology of events, you study everything event wise. For instance, in 1617, there will not be any major like major happenings, but in 19, I think there will be this uh, Raul attack, Jayang Malabag massacre, then non-cooperation movement, then just try to develop a chronology and in major movements, you just see what Say for instance, you will major movements will have non-cooperation movements, civil disobedience movement. Okay, so for non how those two movements differed, but just try to have some comparison. See who are all the major um, like leaders in non-cooperation movement, who are the major leaders in civil disobedience movement, what is the motto, how international congress as an organization has transformed between your non-cooperation movement and your civil disobedience movement. What is the difference in motos? I think that I put how different regions, different sects of society reacted to it. For instance, your non-cooperation movement, your Muslim participation will be the highest. Because your non-cooperation movement would have been started on the question of what? Khilafat. The question of Khilafat. So, in non-cooperation movement, your Muslim's participation will be highest. But in civil disobedience movement, it will be not. Because your Muslim league had almost, like they had established and like they were asking for separate country status and also the civil disobedience movement did not see much participation from Muslims. So, those differences you should know. Okay. And then important constitutional offers. For instance, your August offer, your cabinet mission, your Shimla delegation. Ah, what is that? With Lord Wavell. Sorry. Wavell's plan. Shimla what? Shimla conference. Shimla conference is like the Wavell, Wavell's plan, right? Okay. August of the where no one may know. Crips mission. Then Shimla, then cabinet. I think Muna Pinna. At least I'm. So, you should know what is the prominence of all this. Why first all, see there is a specific reason why August offer was given. Your August offer was given in 1941 or 42. So, you should know about the timelines when they were established and why they were established also. You should know why, why question is also important. Okay. And if you know this, so when it comes to 1947, If you like try to analyze how the Britishers were like forced to give such offers to India to make them participate in World War Two, you will understand that your World War Two played a major role in India's independence. If suppose there wasn't a World War Two, we might not have got independence at all. Chances were there. Your Indian independence is a mix of your domestic as well as international factors. Okay, see because your August offer was given because your U UK was facing retreats, they were losing battles without the support of India. And your Crips mission and 
your less tall will come because of the support from your us and russia ussr they will force uk to go in for settlements because those two states at that point of time they will be against colonialism ussr and us so you should have idea about all this mm. and then yeah so in gandhian phase you just register important events and from that events you should like have some idea about like major personalities and the ideology that cropped up how your international uh, um, like uh, incidents had influenced your local policies or how local policies influence international i mean international relations all those you should just have some idea okay so shall we move on to the questions okay so what is this the government of india act of 1919 it is a law so here if you know see generally if you see the options it is definitely one is wrong so now you should find which is wrong which one is wrong okay what is this transferred reserved what is the difference between reserved subjects and transferred subjects reserved subjects the government reserve is what okay so transfer okay okay but two exercises see both your reserved and transferred are exercised by your governor general only but your reserved is exercised by your governor general on the basis of the recommendation given by the council your transferred is exercised by the governor general on the basis of recommendation of council of ministers that is the difference but both are exercised by governor only see this transferred subject is like our current system it is a the prime minister and council of ministers they make policies but notionally it is your president who signs it so that is the, your transferred subject is like our current system but your reserved subject is like our old system so your indians will your elected indians will not have any say in the reserved subjects okay which of the following was treated as reserved okay which are were reserved see from the options you can know definitely one is wrong okay which one is wrong police is under direct governor general so police is what reserved so four must be there so you can eliminate what a you can eliminate a because police is definitely there then So justice also because at that point of time, you had the executive and justice was not separate. So if four is there, means definitely one should also be there. So you can eliminate B. Okay, land revenue, local self government. Revenue, revenue is controlled by. The revenue also they will be controlled by governor. So it's what your local self government. See if you do not know, see there are two ways to answer this. One is choosing which are all. Are there and reserved, or which is not there and reserved? Your local self government. If you see, if you trace the administrative development of your local self governments, in 1919 it will be in transfer. In 1935 it will go to provincial governments. So if you know this chronology, you can definitely eliminate this. So your A. b d are wrong only your c is right but for that you should know this how administration in india has changed so go to the next one this is what revolutionaries and personalities personalities associated with them gadar party you know gadar party form i think it was formed during first world war 1913 i think 13 so you should know who are all the prominent people as far as i know raspberry bose was there 
So I I eliminated these two. So here Birendra Kumar Ghosh, I know he was a revolutionary, but I do not know whether he was associated with Gadar Party or not. So here you need to take a risk depending on your knowledge or the kind of facts that you remember. Okay, but if you know the personality associated with Gadar Party, you can eliminate two. Fine. Okay, I think recently in independence speech, the Prime Minister has mentioned about revolutionaries. So it's better you know about prominent revolutionaries like Bhagat Singh. And who knows? Savarkar also they'll add to the list of revolutionary. So read about him also. Okay. Okay, what is this? Scripps mission is what? Your constitutional offers. So you should know what each constitutional offer guarantee. If you know that, you will be able to answer this question. What is the difference between your August offer and Crips mission? The major prominent difference? This uh, August offer is a dominant shift. In August offer, what they will tell is, they will tell India shall have a constituent assembly which consists of mainly Indians. But in Crips mission, they will tell only Indians. Mainly Indians ko, only Indians ko difference rikhi. See, assume mainly Indians means at least 90 people will be Indians and 10 people will be representatives of British. But in Crips mission, they told only Indians. So, that is the difference between your August offer and Crips mission. Okay. Okay. Okay, what is this? Ulgulan is again a terminology. This is what a tribal revolt, Bisra Mundas revolt. So, what now this year again, what your prime minister belongs to your, I mean, your person belongs to your Santal tribes. So, so you just be aware about the peasant movements that were associated with Santal tribes. Okay, there is a high possibility that this can be asked. Okay, what is this Katunai country? What is Katunai country? Recently they were like very popular, worldwide popular. Raskas for elephant whisperers, those people belong to Katunai countries. And that can be asked as because I think your prime minister or someone they visited, right? When your prime minister came to Tamil Nadu, he visited those two people who had featured in that short film. That's a short film, right? Documentary. Elephant Whisperers. Any ideas? Another aspect is your major pacts that we are saying, your Lucknow Pact, Gandhi Irwin Pact, Ambedkar and uh, Puna Pact. So your Gandhi Irwin Pact is also called as Delhi Pact. You have some idea about Puna Pact. I think because this is the 90th year of Puna Pact. It was in 1833 or 34, I am not very sure. I mean 1933 or 34. So this year it's like Puna Pact. 90 years of Puna Pact, so can be asked. And you should know what each pact talked about. Okay, this question, any guess? What is the intention of Puna Pact actually? To make Gandhi 
attend to make Gandhi and International Congress participate in round table conference because out of the three round table conferences, your International Congress boycotted the first and the third one. They participated only in the second round table conference. So, this Gandhi Iron Pact was signed after the first round table conference to make Gandhi to participate in the second round table conference. So, your first statement is right, which means what? Your 2, 3 and 4 are, I mean your C and D are wrong. Okay. Then withdrawal of ordinances promulgated in connection with civil disobedience movement. Is it right? Withdrawal of ordinances promoted in connection with civil disobedience movement. Is it right? Okay. We do not know. Assume we do not know. Then acceptance of Gandhi's suggestion. See now after eliminating C and D, it is enough if you prove any one of 2 and 4 to be right or wrong. See now 3 is not in question at all. Okay. So, 3 you can skip actually. But logically speaking, acceptance of Gandhi's suggestion for inquiry into police excesses, your Lord Irwin, he did not accept to that. He did not accept two conditions. One was release of Bhagat Singh, he was not convinced. Then he did not order for inquiry into police excesses. So, your three is definitely wrong. Okay. What about fourth? Release of only those prisoners who are not charged with violence. So, that is something to do with Bhagat Singh actually. Because Prisoners who were involved in revolutionary activities, they were not released. But people who were arrested for peaceful protest, they were released. So, your first statement is right. So, definitely your B is right. <coughs> See, this is what? Where did the Dutch establish factories and they are prominent? See, like every European power, they had their own policies, they had their own set of prominent rulers. So, all those you should be aware of. Okay, so this is what that last one year there was always this reference to Tipu Sultan, especially in the coastal districts of Karnataka. And this year, Karnataka is going for state legislative assembly election. So, there is a lot of scope that something about Tipu Sultan can be asked. Tipu Sultan or Mysore dynasty, Mysore kingdom, anything can be asked. Okay. Okay. See, this is what Montego Chelmsford reforms. Hmm. What is this? Any idea? Hmm. Why? Hmm. When was this right given? To all women? 50. After independence, when constitution was enforced only, right? Voting rights for all women over 24, 21 years was given. So, your first statement is wrong. Okay. Second statement, the Government of India Act of 1934 gave women reserved seats in legislature. Actually, it gave. In 1935 Act, if you see, they gave separate electorate for women. Separate electorate for women means what? Indirectly, it means what? Reserved seats only. Okay. This is something to do with your chronology. I told now the list of events you should like list down for Gandhian era. So that is your this is your quit India resolution is adopted by the Congress. Okay. And then this is what personalities. This question is about personality. So 
so you should know who did what what organizations they established why were they established what was their con contribution especially your ishwar chandra vidyasagar and anni besant should be very sure okay and then some people to add are jyotiba phule b r ambedkar anke gandhi nehru subhash chandra bose patel and this year it's the 200th birth anniversary of swami dayanand saraswati so you should know about what arya samaj and then 150th birth anniversary of sir aurobindo ghosh and 125th death anniversary of said ahmed khan so you should know about what socio religious reform movements what are the two types of socio religious reform movements what's the difference between reformist movements and revivalist movements ஒருஸ்ட் <laughs> <laughs> in the name of reformism he called for revivalism okay so these three personalities there is a high chance that they can be asked this year okay and now in the context of next question is in the context of shah nawaz khan prem kumar sigal and gurbakh singh dilon they are what officers of indian national army okay where were they actually i mean why these three terms were asked what do you know about indian national army trials ina trials so it was these three people who were tried on the first day okay what is the uniqueness of these three names where was this trial held at fort what are the prominent religious population there definitely hindus are there muslims are there sikhs are there because you had united punjab at that time which is like which is very close to delhi so they tried one one hindu one muslim and one sikh, sikh. to avoid any communal backlash okay so your 2021 mark 75 years of your run mutiny 2021 so upsc generally ask questions one year later so that you can ask in 75th year of assassination of mahatma gandhi so that who are all involved in the assassination who are all the like uh, who are all tried who are all the witnesses who all who are all the lawyers who were appeared so that you should know and then this year is 75th year of independence so it is open ended anything can ask anything related to independence so something that they have not touched upon for all these years is the 1947 act so it's better you just have some idea about 1947 act i think they haven't asked at least in the last 15 years i haven't asked about 1949 so okay, what is this charter act again this is a law so if you know what this charter act spoke about definitely this is like pretty straight forward question and this is what swadeshi movement so swadeshi see major movements you should know 
like why the cause the reason who are the people participated what was the significant outcome how it ended whether it achieved its objectives or not so you should have those ideas and this year the prime minister modi is focusing on swadeshi and self reliance because of what your atma atma nirbhar bharat nirbhar bharat and then this is a 100th year of vaikom satyagraha so as far as vaikom satyagraha is concerned you should know for what purpose it was started were all the people there what is the role of periyar in this and then what is the role of mahatma gandhi here so all those you should know okay this is what again organization so this is like what organization so you should like as i said major organization you should know and the people who started them also you should know and this year is like 100 years of swaraj party i think in 1923 it was formed right so you should know who are all the people were there in swaraj party who founded it what is the significance of it what happened to it later what was the influence of them all those you should know and then see your 1935 government of india act is something alternate year they'll repeat somehow directly or indirectly your 1935 act will come okay see again what this is once again organization any guess for this swarajya sabha yes all the home rule the one see definitely hindu mahasabha is wrong okay a and d a sure No, I am not sure. Hmm. 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 Okay. See again. What? This is an event. Samparan Satyagraha. So you should know about all the prominent Satyagrahas of which Mahatma Gandhi was a part. So this is hundred years of Chauri Chowra incident. So Chauri Chowra incident. It was a part of what non-cooperation movement. So. instead of directly asking chauri chowra they can ask about they can ask about non cooperation movement as well as well as the people who were involved i think what happened to this can i zoom out oh i cannot zoom out is it okay see okay anyway these were what subsidy arrangements a policy of british what are the other policies of british subsidy arrangements ring of fence doctrine of laps doctrine of misgovernance then and you should know which all kingdoms were acquired 
from each of these policies. Okay. Okay, what is this? Charles was dispatch. See, this year, I think your education, your four question, one mandatory question on education policy in British can be asked. Because your new education policy, it came in 2020 and till since then, except for one means question on new education policy, no question has been asked. So, that might be asked in your history aspect. Okay. See, this is this year marks 200 year of your 1823 Committee of Public Instruction. Just go through what this committee has said, why was this committee formed, who were all there. Just have some idea. See, this is what again, land taxation, Rathwari. So, if you have an idea about that, we will be able to answer. And then this committee, I think they were asked, UPC was asking this before 2017 and all, they used to ask every year one question, the committee used to come. Because there were a lot of events, say for instance, your Jalian uh, Walabag massacre, after every prominent movement or an event, your British will set up a committee to analyze whether the actions taken were justified or not. So, like there were a lot of committees, there were like committees on droughts, there were committees on floods, there were committees on understanding world wars, there, were committee, there was a committee put up for uh, understanding federalism, there were a lot of committees. So, just try to have some idea about the committees as well, along with the governor generals who were responsible for formation of that committee. See, this is again what? Something to do with an event. Salt Satyagraha. A civil disobedience. So, you just have some idea about who were all. See, region wise. Region wise, in which all region, like salt law was broken and who were all responsible for breaking salt law and who took leadership. So, all those you should know. Okay. To mark. 120th birth anniversary of J. Prakash Narayan, your home minister has unveiled a 15 foot statue. So, read about J. Prakash Narayan, about his socialist ideas and what all organizations he had established and what all organizations he was a part of. And then, read about Aluri Sita Ramaraju, this high probability that they will ask this question, why? 100th year, year of? Ah. Rampa Ravulian, okay, 100th year then. RRR, your, RR, your Ram Charan character was a very weak influence of Raluri Sita Ramaraj. So, since you have so many reasons to ask that question, so it is better you read about him. Next, you should know about. <coughs> the International Congress sessions, major being your, uh, you should know about the Karachi session. Karachi session, I think it will come in 1930s and then Lahore session of 1929, I mean, yeah, 29, Nagpur session, uh, what is it, 1920, non-cooperation movement, non-cooperation movement, Nagpur session, right. So, a non-cooperation movement would be your resolution for non-cooperation movement will be passed in Nagpur uh, session of Congress. So, all those you should know. And then, prominence of all the major Congress sessions. For instance, I think four or five uh, Congress sessions were headed by foreigners. So, you should know which all sessions were headed by foreigners. And a few sessions were headed by women. And you should know which women had uh, like presided over that congress session. And then that 35, 36, 37, during those three years, uh, I think uh, Subhash Chandra Bose and uh, 
conflict between Subhash and Rabos and Gandhi. So those Congress sessions you should be aware of. And then Surat session, Congress, it has some prominence to do with um, your anti-Bengal partition and your Swadeshi movement. So all these prominent session, Congress sessions you should be aware of. Here again, this is what Queen Victoria's proclamation. A question can be asked, and this is what something to do with peasant movement. Okay, I move to the next. This is again what Lahore session of Congress. You should know in which session was what the term Swaraj was put and in which session it was defined. I think Swaraj, the term Swaraj was put in Lahore session, but was properly defined in Karachi session. Okay. And you should know for the last, I think even in the Gandhian phase since 1916, should have an idea about all the viceroys and governor generals. I think after this it will be more regular. 1916 to 21, 21 to 26, 26 to 31, it will be like this, only really for a 5 year period. So, you should know all that because most of the times what UPC does is they will not ask direct questions. They will mention an event and they will ask who was a governor general during this event. I think your spectrum, your last few pages of spectrum, it has a list of governor generals and viceroys and the major events that took place during their tenures. So, just have some idea about that. Okay, so that's it. Presentation mode, if you Hmm. Okay. Okay, in spite of all this, what UPC will do? <laughs> they ask whatever they want to ask only. But if you see, if you like at least cover the previous year papers, modern India definitely you will be able to predict because they ask from more prominent areas like as I said, education, civil service, laws, land revenue system, uh, struggles, events, constitutional. Uh, mechanisms. So, questions are repeated from these areas. So, it the, those you can predict. But your ancient, medieval and art and culture, they are highly random. Okay. So, for that what you can do is you can do nothing but apply intelligent guesses and cover as much areas, as many areas as possible. Okay. Fine. That is it. We just stop here. Should we stop or no?